Now the sons of Issachar were Tola and Pua, Jashub and Shimrom, four. And the sons of Tola, Uzai and Rephaiah and Jeriel and Jamai and Jibsam and Shemuel, heads of their father's house, to wit of Tola. They were valiant men of might in their generations, whose number was, in the days of David, two and twenty thousand and six hundred. And the sons of Uzai, Israiah, and the sons of Israiah, Michael and Obadiah, and Joel, Ishiah, five, all of them chief men. And with them by their generations, after the house of their fathers, were bands of soldiers for war, six and thirty thousand men. For they had many wives and sons, and their brethren among all the families of Issachar were valiant men of might, reckoned in all by their genealogies fourscore and seven thousand. The tribe of Issachar is a tribe that is overshadowed in the scriptures. I've stated on many occasions since the 12 tribe series started, every tribe is important in the nation of Israel. Every tribe contribute to our nation regardless of how significant their role is in the scriptures. Levi and Judah has the responsibility of leading our nation. Therefore, the leaders will be at the forefront in the scriptures. Because the indigenous black communities all over the world lack leadership, majority of black people don't know how leadership works. Levi was given the priesthood and Judah the kingdom. These two tribes will be highlighted throughout the scriptures. However, the other tribes that are not spoken of in the scriptures helped in many ways, especially during the times of the judges when the Israelites were without a king. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And after Abimelech, there arose to defend Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar. And he dwelt in Shemir in Mount Ephraim. And he judged Israel twenty and three years, and died, and was buried in Shemir. Israelites, I am glad that the Most High influenced his people and the prophets to write and preserve their dreams and visions throughout their generations. Through their dreams and visions, the generations that follow know what to expect. Through the prophet's obedience of obeying the commands of the Most High, our generation know what to expect despite living in a system that has perverted our scrolls as well as hide the authentic scriptures from us. The awakening is taking place because of the Holy Spirit that live in the righteous. The Holy Spirit is the one that tell us the truth and reveal to us the things to come. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. The personality traits of Jacob's sons contribute to their inheritance. Their personality trait also influenced their tribe. Some of the patriarch's personality did not transfer to their children. Levi is a very good example of being a stand-apart man. The Most High gave Levi the priesthood because he wanted to be set apart. Therefore, the Most High had heard thy prayer to separate thee from iniquity, and that thou, thou shouldest become to him a son and a servant and a minister of his presence. The tribe of Levi did not walk in the ways of their father, Levi. In the Testament of Levi, Levi stated that he revealed to his sons everything that would happen to them to save their lives, as well as to save himself because Levi did not want to be held accountable for their sins. The scriptures in the Bible said, if you know the truth and you don't share the truth to try and save the person or the person is going down the wrong path and you don't try to divert the person from going down the wrong path, the blood of that person will be on your hands. That is why Levi said to his children, I tell you so I will be cleared from your transgressions. And behold, I am clear from your ungodliness and transgressions, which you shall commit in the end of the ages against the Savior of the world, Christ, 
acting godlessly, deceiving Israel, and stirring up against it great evils from the Lord. And ye shall deal lawlessly together with Israel, so he shall not bear with Jerusalem because of your wickedness. But the veil of the temple shall be rent, so as not to cover your shame. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Not too long after the Most High anointed Aaron's sons as priests, two of his sons offered strange fire to the Most High. The Most High did not command them to do so. They were killed instantly. The transgressions in the tribe of Levi started soon after inheriting the priesthood. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them and they died before the Lord. All of the testaments from the twelve patriarchs to our nation was written to save the lives of their descendants. Our fathers, starting from Adam to Abraham to Isaac and Jacob, made sure to preserve their final moments with all of their children. That is why they gathered their children to them to bless them as well as to prophesy to them. With our fathers gathering their children to warn them, their warnings will save the lives of their descendants. Also, our fathers save themselves and won't be held accountable for their children's iniquities. Any teacher that was awakened by the Most High and anointed to teach his people in the last days are aware of the judgments against them for misleading the sheep, as well as falsifying the truth. The truth of the Most High's words Sanctify the people of the Most High. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The anointed teachers or leaders of the Most High understand the consequences. That is why they don't play with the lives of the sheep in their own lives. The disciples of Satan will carry on in lawlessness. That is what the children of Satan and the wicked are supposed to do. Israelites, that is why narrow is the road that leads to life a few will find that road. The Most High repopulated the earth with eight souls after the flood. Meditate on that for a few hours. I want to give you a deeper look into the population of the remnant. The remnant is not only the people alive in the last days. The remnant and those who will inherit the kingdom consists of the righteous people from the generations of Adam until the final generation. Some of the remnant that would inherit the kingdom is in the afterlife, waiting until the end to inherit the kingdom with those who are alive in the final generation. Israelites, when you think about the remnant, include our brothers and sisters that would inherit the kingdom that have transition. When you look at the remnant in that perspective, your vision becomes clearer on how narrow the road truly is. I hope you can understand why the Most High said, Hell has enlarged itself. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many, and I mean many, are on that road. I will continue to remind everyone who break bread with me on this channel to ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of discernment. There are many in the awakening under the control of the spirit of Belial. Our fathers warn us to save our lives. The time has come for us to listen, become the set-apart people the Most High call us to be. I've heard many doctrines in the awakening and the beast system about the 12 tribes. Everyone wants to be an Israelite. Everyone wants to descend from Jacob, but no one wants to inherit the struggle placed on Jacob for the multitude of sins against the Israelites. Everyone wants to be Israelites, but they don't want to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. 
If you're unwilling to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, you don't belong here. Go back to Rome. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. But the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Because the synagogue of Satan declared the northern kingdom of Israel lost instead of hidden, like the scriptures state, the kings of the earth, along with their princes, are distributing the identity and heritage of the tribes in the northern kingdom to their countries. Despite their nations not practicing the customs of the Israelites, nor do they serve the Most High. Also, their nations are not called after the Most High or the patriarch to the tribes they claim to be. Even the disciples of Satan in the awakening are following after the princes of this earth, the idols they truly serve. The disciples of Satan are giving heathens and the tares heritage that don't belong to them. The tribe of Issachar is no different from the scrutiny of the synagogue of Satan and the disciples of Satan in the awakening. Issachar is the fifth son born to Jacob and Leah. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived, and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. The name Issachar means his reward will come. Leah believed she was rewarded with a son because she gave her handmaiden to Jacob. Leah, a black woman, and Jacob, a black man, had a son, Leah named Issachar. Today, the disciples of Satan in the awakening believe the surviving descendants of Issachar are Mexicans. Judah and Levi managed to remain black. Despite the scriptures revealing the sons of Israel loved the strange women, especially Judah and Levi. Judah and Levi remained black, but Issachar, who shared the same mother with Judah and Levi, are Mexicans. The tribe of Issachar transformed into another species of mankind. Israelites, do you see the flaw and deception in the false charts? If the tribe of Issachar are the so-called Mexicans of today... Every Israelite that proclaimed to return to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth should now see the doctrine of you are what your father is, is a doctrine of devil. Their own chart debunk and expose their doctrine of you are what your father is. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. If Issachar, a black man, is the father to the Mexicans, are you truly are what your father is? How come Issachar's children are not black like Issachar, their father? Did the tribe of Issachar continue to marry strange women until they whited themselves out? If you conduct a DNA testing on a Mexican male, and compare the DNA with the black male from the tribe of Judah, do you believe they will share the same DNA? Remember, Judah and Issachar have the same mother and father, making them full brothers. If you are what your father is, their DNA will be identical. Israelites in the awakening, are you sure you have returned to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. The Mexicans didn't exist before colonization. The twelve tribes of Israel existed long before colonization. The Mexican people are a product of colonization. They are the children of the colonial masters and the indigenous natives of the land they live on. The Bible referred to them as tares. The whited out Mexicans are no different from the European males. 
Israelites, do you see why you need discernment, especially when it comes to the doctrines of devils in the awakening? Issachar is a black man, a son to Jacob and Leah. According to the disciples of Satan, his children are hybrids. Israelites, the doctrine of the tribe of Issachar being the Mexicans of today is false doctrine. Don't believe that false chart. The Bible told us the story about the mandrakes that Rachel took from Reuben before Leah gave birth to Issachar. The Bible said Leah exchanged the mandrakes for a night with Jacob. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldst thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight, for thy son's mandrakes. The Bible failed to disclose the strife that occurred behind the scenes between Rachel and Leah. The scriptures in the Bible made it seem as if Jacob had four wives and everything was good. Not so. The workers of iniquity want to make it appear as if Jacob lived in peace and harmony with his wives. No, Rachel was a devil. One of the biggest complaints the sons of Israel say they want but lack is peace in their home. Everyone should have peace. Without peace, a person can go insane. Israelites, you have to create the environment that will give you peace. Behind the scenes, Rachel did a lot of evil things because she was barren and angry. She even vexed Jacob when she couldn't conceive. She said to Jacob, give me children or I will die. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, am I in God's stead who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Many people want to make Rachel and Jacob's romance a love story that everyone should desire because Jacob labored 14 years to have Rachel. What are they hiding from you? The scripture said Leah was hated. That is why the Most High opened her womb. The mandrakes Rachel stole from Reuben is a fruit that increased fertility. Rachel stole them from Reuben in the hopes that she would conceive. She exchanged a mandrake for Leah to have one night with Jacob. When Leah said, is it not enough that you took my husband, but you take the mandrakes also? Once Rachel married Jacob, she interfered with his relationship with Leah. That is why Leah exchanged the mandrakes for one night with Jacob. Now these mandrakes were sweet smelling apples, which were produced in the land of Haran below a ravine of water. And Rachel said, I will not give them to thee, but they shall be to me instead of children. For the Lord hath despised me, and I have not borne children to Jacob. Now there were two apples, and Leah said to Rachel, Let it suffice thee that thou hast taken my husband, will thou take these also? And Rachel said to her, Thou shalt have Jacob this night for the mandrakes of thy son. And Leah said to her, Jacob is mine, for I am the wife of his youth. But Rachel said, Boast not, and vaunt not thyself. For he espoused me before thee, and for my sake he served our father fourteen years. And had not craft increased on the earth, and the wickedness of men prospered, thou wouldest not see the face of Jacob. For thou art not his wife, but in craft were taken to him in my stead. And my father deceived me, and removed me on that night, and did not suffer Jacob to see me. For had I been there, this had not happened to him. Nevertheless, for the mandrakes, I am hiring Jacob to thee for one night. As you have heard, Rachel constantly remind Leah that she was supposed to be Jacob's wife. I am pretty sure Rachel made life miserable for Leah and everyone. In the Testament of Issachar, Issachar said if Leah did not exchange the mandrake for a night with her husband Jacob, Leah would have borne eight sons for Jacob. Rachel would have remained barren. And had not Leah, my mother, paid the two apples for the sake of his company, she would have borne eight sons. For this reason, she bare six, and Rachel bare the two. For on account of the mandrakes, the Lord visited her. For he knew that for the sake of children, she wished to company with Jacob, and not for the lust of pleasure. 
For on the morrow also she again gave up Jacob because of the mandrakes. Therefore the Lord hearkened to Rachel. The Most High honored the covenant Leah and Rachel made. Leah agreed to be with Jacob for one night for the mandrakes. Israelites, the Most High honor all covenants, regardless if you make those covenants with the workers of iniquity. Be careful with whom you make covenants with. The Most High made it very clear to make no covenants with the heathens and their gods. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. The disciples of Satan persuade many to fellowship and join their assemblies with the multiple wives doctrine. Israelites, that is why I say not all in the awakening were awakened by the Most High. The Satans used the disciples of Satan and the lust of the flesh to lure some Israelites into the awakening. Despite being in the awakening, the lust of the flesh is still dominant in many Israelites. The daughters of Zion are not excluded from the lust of the flesh. The disciples of Satan made it seem like having multiple wives would cure the lust of the flesh. Most people are not aware of the drama in those marriages. Just because the scriptures do not disclose the drama, it doesn't mean the relationship was perfect. Jacob's marriage with two sets of sisters was not peaceful. Rachel, the woman Jacob loved, worked in deceit. She allowed her desire to have children for Jacob, deceive her into making terrible decisions. When Jacob finally decided to leave Laban's home, Rachel stole her father's idol gods. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Rachel persecuted her sister Leah. I'm pretty sure if Zilpha and Bilhah were not caught in the drama, they would have had a husband of their own. Unfortunately, Bilhah was caught in a scandal with Reuben, and nothing was said about Jacob's concubines in the scriptures. Rachel's wrath should have been against her father. It was her father Laban who deceived them all. Leah and the handmaids had to suffer. Jacob had to work 14 years because Laban saw that he was blessed because of Jacob. The deceiver Laban was finally judged when Jacob left. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go unto mine own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me, and ye know that with all my power I have served your father, and your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, The speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, The ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father, and given them to me. Too many Israelites in the awakening believe having multiple partners is going to cure the raging marine spirit that deceived them. Having multiple wives is not going to solve the problem. Feeding the unclean incubus and succubus marine spirit with sex is giving the devil what it wants. If having multiple wives is the cure to cause the unclean spirit to flee, why do so many struggle even after having multiple wives? Even if they don't have multiple wives, they commit adultery with multiple women and it's still not enough. King Solomon had 300 wives and 700 concubines. That did not cure the lust of the flesh in him. You know what happened to King Solomon? His multiple wives and strange women destroyed him. King Solomon's wickedness caused our nation to be divided into two kingdoms. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servants. Notwithstanding, in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, 
but will give one tribe to thy son, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Feeding the raging marine spirits in you that is responsible for all sexual perversions with multiple partners is not going to solve the problem, but create bigger problems. Most sexual sins lead to many people having spirit husbands and spirit wives. Marine spirits are diabolical, and this kind require prayer and fasting to be delivered from. Albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Israelites, there's always a devil behind the scenes enticing you to give in to the lust of the flesh. Unfortunately, the nation of Israel is guilty of all kinds of sexual perversions. Reading the testaments of the patriarch as well as the scriptures in the Bible reveal this truth. Multiple partners is not going to solve the lust of the flesh issues. The Most High says, submit to him, resist the devil, and they will flee from you. Bigger devils that have a stronghold on your life require prayer and fasting. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The way to know if an unclean spirit, a worker of iniquity, or the Satans have a stronghold on your life? In the spirit realm, animals represent spirits. If the animal appear in the size of an insect, like a roach or a spider, the animal appear extremely tiny, that is a little devil. The devil is not yet fully grown in your life. Sometimes the Most High show you the tiny, unclean spirit in the form of an animal to warn you of a problem that is small but will become a bigger issue if you don't deal with it. When you begin to see lions, bulls, dragons, giant birds, you see animals, but they are gigantic or oversized. That unclean spirit has a stronghold on your life, as well as the Most High is showing you that you are dealing with a big devil, a high-level devil. Israelites, keep this knowledge in your mind as reference for the next time you see small or big animals in the spirit realm. Like the other sons of Jacob's testaments we've read, Jacob blessed and prophesied to his son Issachar as well. Jacob gathered his sons and told them what would befall them in the last days. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens, and he saw that rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Let us dissect the blessings Jacob bestow upon Issachar. Jacob said Issachar would be a strong ass or donkey, and he would become a servant unto tribute. In the Testaments of Issachar, Issachar said Jacob blessed him based on his characteristics of being righteous. Issachar's heart was pure. He was in charge of the first fruit offerings for his people. The first fruit offering is what the beast religion called tithes and offerings. When, therefore, I grew up, my children, I walked in uprightness of heart, and I became a husbandman for my father and my brethren, and I brought in fruits from the field according to their season. And my father blessed me, for he saw that I walked in rectitude before him. And my father always rejoiced in my rectitude, because I offered through the priest to the Lord all first fruits, then to my father also. In the Testament of Issachar, Issachar described his personality to his children. Issachar said he walked in uprightness of heart. He was not a busybody nor envious and malicious against his neighbor. Issachar said he never slandered anyone. Issachar was a man that lived in simplicity. If he was alive today, he would be what the men of today call a simp. If you're a person that is not flashy and you enjoy the simple things in life, the tribe of Issachar may be your tribe. And I was not a busybody in my doings, nor envious and malicious against my neighbor. I never slandered anyone, nor did I censure the life of any man, walking as I did in singleness of I. Issachar said he walked in singleness. He did not engage in fornication. In the testament of Issachar, he said when he was 35 years old, that is when he found his wife. Issachar wasn't passing around women and soliciting prostitutes like some of his brothers. 
Issachar said Jacob, his father, knew that the Most High helped him to become a successful single. Therefore, when I was 35 years old, I took to myself a wife, for my labor wore away my strength, and I never thought upon pleasure with women, but owing to my toil, sleep overcame me. And the Lord increased ten thousandfold his benefit in my hands, and also Jacob. My father knew that God aided my singleness. Anyone looking to master singleness can become a successful single person if they allow the Most High to help them. Most Israelites are being manipulated by the spirit of lust because they are not willing to do what is necessary to be delivered from the spirit of lust and all sexual sins. Instead of praying to be delivered, some are trying to find ways to manipulate their people to feed the unclean spirit in them. Issachar took the time to live his life and the Most High blessed him because of his uprightness. Issachar helped the poor. Issachar was an all-around good man. For on all the poor and oppressed I bestowed the good things of the earth in the singleness of my heart. Early in his life, Issachar took the occupation of husbandry. A husbandman is a farmer. When Jacob blessed Issachar, he said he would be strong. When Issachar saw that his land was good, he settled in his land and became a servant of tribute. The tribe of Issachar land inheritance was very good for his occupation in the field of agriculture. And the fourth lot came out to Issachar, but the children of Issachar according to their families. And their border was toward Jezreel, and Chesuloth, and Shunem, and Aphraim, and Shan, and Anaharath, and Rabith and Kishon, and Abez, and Rameth, and Enganim, and Enhadah, and Beth Pazez, and the coast reacheth to Tabor, and Shahazimah, and Beth Shemesh, and the outgoings of their border were at Jordan, sixteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Issachar according to their families, the cities and their villages. The tribe of Issachar is not a part of the tribes that failed to drive out the heathens from their land. The tribe of Issachar and Simeon followed the commands of the Most High and drive out all the inhabitants from their land. Israelites, you know how I repeatedly say to you to ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of discernment. The scriptures reveal that the children of Issachar were a people of understanding. They can discern the times and knew what the Israelites had to do. The tribe of Issachar was blessed with the spirit of discernment. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Issachar and his descendants have great wisdom and understanding. We know in the bloodline of the Israelites, having great wisdom and understanding don't equal good decisions. The Israelites have shown that they know what they are supposed to do, but do the opposite. The scripture said wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. With all you're getting, get understanding. When you have understanding, the Satans can't deceive you. Issachar commanded his children to walk in singleness. Issachar shared the benefits of walking in singleness. And now, hearken to me, my children, and walk in singleness of your heart, for I have seen in it all that is well-pleasing to the Lord. The single-minded man coveth not gold, he overreacheth not his neighbor, he longeth not after manifold deities, he delighteth not in varied apparel. And the spirits of deceit have no power against him, for he looketh not on the beauty of women, lest he should pollute his mind with corruption. Keep, therefore, my children, the law of God, and get singleness, and walk in guiltlessness, not playing the busy body with the business of your neighbor, but love the Lord and your neighbor, have compassion on the poor and weak. Issachar said to his children to continue in husbandry, for he was given the blessings of the first fruits. Bow down your back unto husbandry, and toil in labors in all manners of husbandry, Offering gifts to the Lord with thanksgiving. For with the first fruit of the earth will the Lord bless you, even as he blessed all the saints from Abel even until now. For no other portion is given to you than of the fatness of the earth, whose fruits 
are raised by toil. For our father Jacob blessed me with the blessing of the earth and of first fruits. Did the children of Issachar listen to their father? As long as the patriarchs lived, their children obeyed their commands. After multiple generations, the children will forsake and forget the commandments of their fathers. In addition, when the people have a wicked leader over them, they will fall into sin. In the testament of Issachar, Issachar revealed to his children that in the last days, they will forsake singleness. They will cleave to the lusts of the flesh. They will forsake the commandments of the Most High and cleave to the spirit of Belial. Know ye therefore, my children, that in the last times your sons will forsake singleness and will cleave unto insatiable desire, and leaving guilelessness will draw near to malice, and forsaking the commandments of the Lord, they will cleave unto Belial. Issachar revealed that they will forsake husbandry. Remember, husbandry is farming. The children of Issachar would join Levi, Judah, and Dan in the diaspora. Issachar revealed that his tribe will be dispersed among the Gentiles and they will serve their enemies. And leaving husbandry, they will follow after their own wicked devices and they shall be dispersed among the Gentiles and shall serve their enemies. Israelites, there's a difference to being dispersed in captivity. So far, we know Levi, Judah, Dan, and Issachar was dispersed. Naphtali and Benjamin remain in captivity. The tribe of Naphtali and Benjamin remain in the land they sojourn, but are in captivity and their enemies rule over them. While the tribes that were dispersed, they are scattered all over the world. The tribe of Issachar was dispersed. The testament of Issachar does not reveal that the children of Issachar would have a successful country called Mexico in the last days, where many people would travel for tourism. Also, they are able to stand against the USA. The testament of Naphtali revealed Jacob would be scattered. Every tribe that was scattered are controlled by their enemies. And Joseph fled away upon a little boat, and we were all divided upon nine planks, and Levi and Judah were together, and we were all scattered unto the ends of the earth. And I saw, for I was there, and behold, a holy writing appeared to us, saying, Assyrians, Medes, Persians, Chaldeans, Syrians shall possess in captivity the twelve tribes of Israel. Issachar revealed to his children that if they take heed to his instructions, the Most High will deliver them and they will return to their land. Issachar said to his children at 126 years old, he is not conscious of committing any sin. Issachar said he never committed fornication. He's been with his wife only. He never drank wine nor coveted or desired anything of his neighbor. Issachar said he loved the Most High and he loved his people with all of his heart. Issachar said to his children, if they follow in his footsteps, every spirit of the Satans will flee from them. Behold, therefore, as ye see, I am a hundred and twenty-six years old, and I am not conscious of committing any sin. Except my wife, I have not known any woman. I never committed fornication by the uplifting of my eyes. I drank not wine to be led astray thereby. I coveted not any desirable things that was my neighbor's. Guile arose not in my heart. A lie passed not through my lips. If any man were in distress, I joined my sights with his, and I shared my bread with the poor. I wrought godliness all my days. I kept truth. I loved the Lord, likewise also every man with all my heart. So do you also these things, my children, and every spirit of Belial shall flee from you, and no deed of wicked men shall rule over you. Issachar lived the life all Israelites should desire to live. He served the Most High in his people. Unfortunately, his children did not follow in his footsteps. Issachar is another example of being a stand-apart man and his tribe didn't possess the same character trait like their father. The testament of Issachar revealed to us that we can serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, regardless of where we are in this world. If your heart is pure, the Most High will be with you. The Most High will give you favor everywhere you go. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield.
so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Issachar, Joseph, and many other Israelites live a life that was pleasing to the Most High. As their descendants, we can live a set-apart life regardless if we are in the land of our captivity. The awakening is about repentance. The disciples of Satan are creating doctrines that is causing the Israelites to give in to the lust of the flesh instead of repenting. The doctrines of devils are increasing the sins of our people. Israelites, listen to the Most High and humble yourself. Repent and turn from your wicked ways. Anything that is impossible for you is possible with the Most High. The Most High said to Sarah and many other Israelites, Is there anything too hard for me? Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So far, every testament we've read from the fathers have taught us life lessons. Learning the characteristics of each father and the prophecies about their tribes in the last days will help solve the identity crisis many Israelites suffer from. Reading the testaments of the patriarchs can help all Israelites in the awakening to better serve the Most High. I'm not from the tribe of Issachar, but I will definitely take heed to the commands Issachar gave to his children. We can become the set-apart people the Most High called us to be. The people of the Most High, the Israelites, have to stop taking the Most High for granted. It's either you will serve the Most High or you won't. The Most High know your heart. Narrow is the road that leads to life. If we take heed to the instructions of our fathers and obey their words, we will certainly triumphant over the heads of all enemies. The Most High will be right there helping his people. The Most High said he will never leave us nor forsake us. Israelites, the choice is yours. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, 